Thank you for calling Bay for Tech Support. How can I assist you? <laughs> sir, sir, I'm on your side. I want to help. Don't yell at me, please. Thank you. This is an emergency. I need to Google something, but I can't. Hmm. Well, it looks like your internet is down. No problem. I'm gonna send you my best support engineer. But before, please allow me to describe him for you. First of all, he has a genuine smile on his face that comes directly from the heart. He listens to the problem carefully and patiently even if the person explaining is non-technical. Hi, what seems to be the problem? I guess when I Google the word Google, it doesn't want to Google, so there's no Google. From each and every angle, he's going to show how excited he is to help. Not a problem! I'm here to fix it! Oh my god! Yay! He's going to start by asking for a network diagram or topology so he can understand the network better. But unfortunately, they're not always very helpful. So he might have to investigate the network himself to learn the topology. He also checks the wiring for any obvious mistakes. Yay! Then he will respect the first rule of troubleshooting by turning the computer in question off and on again. He's gonna make sure the computer is connected to the wireless network, then he will try to open a website. Then he will go to the Windows command prompt and type in ipconfig to make sure it has received an IP address from the DHCP server of the wireless router and he is able to ping the default gateway. He is going to test another client device to make sure the problem is not happening on one computer only. So far he knows the problem is happening on the wireless network. This time he's going to connect the computer with an Ethernet cable to the wireless router and do the same tests. Although troubleshooting can get very frustrating and stressful, he never forgets to smile and be positive. <clears throat> Now he is going to bypass the wireless router and connect the computer directly to the modem. Google. Hmm. Well, interesting. Now that I'm connected directly to the modem, everything works fine. That is actually good news and bad news. Good news is I know it's not the ISP. Bad news is I can't blame the ISP and I have to search more. I mean, yay! Now that he knows the modem and ISP are working fine, he's going to connect back to the wireless network and this time in the command prompt, try to ping 8.8.8.8 .8 and also ping google.com. With these results, he is suspicious that there is a DNS server issue. Because DNS is responsible for translating the domain names into their corresponding IP addresses. He is able to ping a public IP address but not a domain name. He can also use the nslookup command to test the DNS server. It looks like the DNS server which is 192.168.1.17 is not able to resolve and translate the domain names. So now if he types in ipconfig slash all, he can see that there is only one DNS server configured. It's a good practice to add a secondary or even a tertiary DNS server. So in case the primary is down, we can still use the internet. And this is something that can be configured on the DHCP server, which in this case is on the wireless router. So he is going to add two external DNS servers to the DHCP server and now if he release and renew the IP address on the client machine, he can see that the new DNS servers have been added. He can successfully ping google.com and the websites are loading fine now. Yay! You're very welcome. Please feel free to give us a call back if you have any other questions. Bye! Oh my god! <laughs>